Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you're keeping well. Um, as you can see, I've taken an executive decision to start Christmas a little bit earlier. I thought as today is the first day of the four week lockdown, it's November the 5th, Thursday, November the 5th. I thought it'd be quite nice for us to just begin to think a little bit about Christmas and the fact it's not too far away. Um, so hence, I've got the Christmas tree up here at the Emerald Centre Library. Um, where I do all my recordings from. So um, I hope everyone's um, keeping well and managing to find time to get some of the beautiful autumn sunshine and um, going out for walks and taking care of yourselves, please. So um, I want to give you just an introduction to the materials that I want you to look at next week. So um, next week we have, I think something really special. We're going to be focusing on the concept of the journey. Um, every journey, um, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Um, and that can be literal or it can be metaphorical or it can be virtual. Um, and um, I want to introduce you to the topic and what will be in store and to give you some pointers on, um, I think the best way that you can engage with these um, special materials that we've put together for you. So we are really um, um, privileged to have two special guests, Stuart Maybambury, who is a music producer, songwriter, and literary historian, and Lee Spreadbury, who is a music teacher and composer. And what um, Stu and Lee are, um, have done is prepared for you a series of materials um, which is looking at the concept of the journey as recounted through literature and music. Now, we want this to be a really special um, session for you where you can just immerse yourself in these materials. Uh, um, it's heavy and audiovisual content. It's, there are some uh, recordings that Lee has put together, especially for um, Place Memory Meaning students for this year. So that's really, we've got kind of original input from Lee for that, to help us understand this concept of the journey from a different perspective. That's not to say you can't theorize about music and literature, and of course you can. And in fact, students in previous years have done exactly that. They've taken um, something that they've read or they've taken um, uh, an album or they've taken a song or they've looked at lyrics and they've sort of deconstructed them and used that as to tell their personal journey of place. Um, but even if you're not planning to do that, I think this is, is kind of it's a little bit different and hopefully will just enable us just to take a bit of a step back and to immerse ourselves. of journey. The, the word journey can make can take many different forms. It can come to us in many different guises. And I think the message here is we want you just to open up your thinking of what constitutes journey. You know, life is the ultimate journey. And finally, to assist your assignment development through the fostering of reflexive practices. And reflexive is just one step further from reflex, reflective. If we're reflecting about something, um, it's just a fancy way of saying we're thinking about something when we're reflexive. It's something that becomes so much an integral part of ourselves that we do it without thinking. So that's the that's the idea behind the reflexive practices that, you know, ideas will come to us without us necessarily having to sort of um, consciously cultivate them, if that makes sense. OK, so part one, rationale, scene setting and instruction. So this is from me just to sort of set the scene for what we want you to be doing with these materials. Um, next week. Um, so um, um, after I've done my overview, um, which I'll do momentarily, um, Stuart is going to take you through um, three further stages of the journey, beginning with um, part two of this um, um, uh, uh, recorded um, um, set of resources from medieval to modernity. So going back to the very early quests of pilgrims, um, the time when Geoffrey Chaucer was writing, and then taking us through to the beginning of modernity. 
Uh, this is um, inevitably a uh, selective view of that period. We can't fit it all in, or um, you know, or, or um, you know, um, uh, or even focus in detail at any one particular aspect. But the idea is to 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 just to really introduce and to begin to think about what this notion of the journey is, because in your assignment you will be taking a personal journey and taking us as tutors with you through, through that journey. Then part three is what Stu's called after the rain. So this is in the post World War II period and the beginnings of restlessness and rebellion. And when journeying and um, took on a very, a very different guise and then moving past that period. And then finally ending with new pilgrimages, new quests. So things for you to think about, for us all to think about as to you know, um, you know, what pilgrimage do we want to be on, whatever it might be, big or small, you know, personal, um, um, you know, private or public, and what new quests do we want to pursue and why? And I think it's just it's a really exciting prospect for us. Um, so that's what we'll be ending with, and you know, that links you know to your thinking on the assignment, but also has a range of other um, inferences as well. So, as I mentioned, a journey can be literal or metaphorical. It can be physical, spiritual, figurative, and it does traverse space and time. You know, um, we say that, you know, if you look at a person's life cycle, we can see the way that places that we have maybe cherished as children take on a different um, complexion as we get older. Those childhood memories are, are practically have a certain sanctity to them they're practically theological you know um, they're quite they're quite sacred we get very protective over those things and some of those those anchors and uh, we have as children help us to negotiate the complexities of the world today so you know we're already you know um, on our life's journey your journey through um, academic life at Sheffield Hallam and, and, the, and the, the, you know, new pilgrimages and quests that you will have ahead of you um, and after you graduate from us at Sheffield Hallam Union. So um, I think when you're going and along the materials which are to follow led by, led by Stu, um, you know, do have, do take notes. Um, um, and I think just momentarily, I think it's quite good just to think about, you know, um, when we visit other physical places, you know, to what extent are we a traveller or a tourist? And I think there are some very uh, important distinctions to be made between being a traveller or being a tourist. You know, what is our role in that in that sense, you know, um, not just in terms of kind of behavioral aspects, but sort of moral and ethical responsibilities that we may have if we assume one role or the other. And the extent to which places can be, you know, spiritual, but they can also become places of tourism. Glastonbury is a really good example of that. Originally began in, you know, the seat of King Arthur um, in the Vale of, of Avalon and kind of morphed into something mythological and now is mostly associated with the music festival. Um, so, you know, places can change over time. And I think also just reflecting um, on our own journeys, what highlights you've experienced along the way. You know, if you look back on the particular seminal events in your own life, you know, what ones have more importance than others? So I'm just going to pause the video at that point so as that you can begin to think about some of these issues and I'll get back to you in a couple of minutes. Okay, so having thought about the differences between being a traveller and a tourist, I hope that's yielded some useful insights. And thinking of your own journey, what have been the milestones? Um, again, that can be metaphorical, it could be literal that you've encountered along the way. Um, so I hope that's been an interesting exercise. Okay. So instructions for this special session. Okay, very straightforward. Open up the pre-recorded lecture, lecture with Stu. Um, there is a YouTube link for this, but I'm also going to make the original um, uh, materials uh, is actually better, I think. Um, so, um, so I suggest you, 
you know, try both and see what you like. Um, and you also need to open up a list of essential YouTube links which accompany um, Stuart's lecture. Um, Stuart will tell you what link to look at when and keep this list open in a new tab so you can just kind of toggle between um, both of them. So when Stuart asks, just pause the video and watch the relevant YouTube clip. It's all interconnected, all the, all the links are relevant to this, um, this sort of exposition of the concept of the journey that we're doing through literature and music. Um, and there are 10 clips in total, four of which feature um, Lee Spreadbury. And um, hope you'll find those interesting too. And there's also a series of points where we'll be, Stuart will be asking you to pause the video and to complete some exercises as you go along. So I think you probably need in total about two hours, everyone, to do this um, lecture. Um, so um, to go through it um, thoroughly, I hope it's interesting. I hope you like it. I hope it's a little bit of a reprieve from some of the other um, topics that you've been covering. Um, the fact that it is a little different does mean, of course, it's still really instructive from your point of view to be able to conceive things in a different, in a different way, in a new way, and to be able to encourage us to, you know, to, to draw on that creative side, that creative side of our thinking, which will help you um, in your place, memory, and meaning assignment, and further down the line as well, I'm sure. So I hope you enjoy this very special session, everyone. And, um, you know, do take care in um, the weeks ahead. And um, please remember, it's not too long until Christmas. So have that uppermost in your mind. So thanks again, everyone, and look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.